Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting equation. We have x to the power of square root of 2 equals 1 minus ln x. I'll be presenting two methods and I'm also going to show you a graph at the end. So we're going to be using something pretty interesting. First method. Obviously, for a problem like this, you can do guess and check, right? Can't you? I mean, that doesn't guarantee you found all the solutions, but at least that gives us a solution. Now, first of all, notice that x to the power square root of 2 is an increasing function, right? All right. And then 1 minus ln x, ln x is increasing, but 1 minus ln x is going to be a decreasing function because it's kind of like the opposite of ln x plus 1. Plus 1 wouldn't make any difference. If you differentiate it, you'll get the idea, okay? Obviously, it's only defined for positive x values. If it's in the real world, that's why it is going to be negative when differentiated. So we have an increasing function equals a decreasing function. What is that supposed to mean? One function is going to go up, one function is going to go down, and they're going to intersect at a single point. Obviously, the graphs are not going to be like that. It, they're going to be different. And I'll, I'll show you the graphs at the end. But first of all, before we start solving the problem, let's go ahead and test some values. For example, can x be 0? But remember, we just said x needs to be greater than 0. So that kind of restricts the domain. Obviously, if the domain of uh, 1 minus ln x is positive values, the same thing is going to be true for x to the power root 2 because they can only intersect where they're defined, right? So x must be positive. Under those conditions, you can kind of test out some values, especially if you have ln x, you should always, always equal to, set it equal to 0. So ln 1 is 0, pretty much any log uh, 1 is 0. So we get, if we replace x with 1, we get 1 minus 0, and that gives us 1, right? And on the left-hand side, we also get 1 if you replace x with 1. In other words, if you replace x with 1, you get 1 to the power root 2 equals 1 minus ln 1. That's true because this is 0. And 1 to the power root 2 is 1, right? Well, at least in the real world. What happens in the complex world? That's a very different story. But x equals 1 works. Okay, great. So guess and check. We get a solution. Is that cool? Now, obviously, the first method is short this time, which is very rare. Normally, it's more painful, but I want to give you something real quick. We'll, we're going to take a look at the graph at the end, okay? Let's go ahead and talk about the second method, which is a little longer, but more interesting. So the question is, can we use Lambert's W function? I know you guys like that function, and let's go ahead and give it a try. So Lambert's W function is pretty useful. So let's say you have you had a problem like this. This would be super simplistic. But x e to the x equals 2 e squared. Now you could use Lambert's W function. Obviously, without using it, you know x equals 2. But there are different branches. So we kind of need to talk about how many solutions there are, so on and so forth. So with a problem like this, you could use it. Even You could even use it for something like x e to the x equals 2, right? You could Lambert both sides and then uh, this would give you Lambert or W X E to the X equals W2. And then from here, you will just get X equals W2. Now, what happens if you had instead something like this? X ln X equals 2. You could still use Lambert's W function because you could turn this into this format. X E to the X or in, uh, in more general terms, T E to the T. T is my thing. Whatever that thing is, it's just going to be repeated. So here's what we can do. We can write the x as e to the power ln x, and then this will be ln x times e to the power ln x equals 2. And now this is going to be your thingy. Look at that, the thingy times e to the power thingy is going to be 2. If you Lambert both sides, you're going to get ln x from here. And of course, in this case, you have to use exponentiation, but ln x equals Lambert w of 2, and then you're going to do x equals e to the ln x again, which is going to be e to the power Lambert w2. Make sense? So there's some examples how you can use Lambert's w function uh, for simple cases. But we have something more interesting. And by the way, this is a product. You could also use it for a sum. Like what would happen if you had x plus ln x equals 2? Could you use it again? Absolutely, but you just got to manipulate this a little bit, okay? Take some manipulations, and here's how we're going to do it. 
This is a sum. You don't want that. You want to turn it into a product. How do you turn a sum into a product? Think about it. And also think about Cauchy's functional equations, right? And if you said exponentials, yes, you got it. So I'm going to do e to the power both sides. And that's going to give me something amazing. And this is really cool because from a sum, we're getting a product. And that product is actually very helpful uh, in terms of Lambert's W. So we can write this as e to the x times e to the ln x equals e squared. And of course, e to the ln x is just x by definition. This gives us x e to the x equals e squared. And there you go. The rest is straightforward. You just w both sides and you're going to get the answer. Does that make sense? Pretty easy, right? Great. So this worked with x plus ln x. Would it work with a different scenario? Let's go ahead and check it out. And this is actually the second method. So we have x to the power root 2 equals 1 minus ln x, a very irrational exponent, right? Great. So now here's what we're going to do. First of all, in order to be able to use Lambert's W function, I want to get a number on one side and everything else, variables, x's, whatever, on the other side. So let's go ahead and add ln x to both sides. And then we're going to use the same strategy, do e to the power of both sides. Is that going to help us? Let's find out. We're going to get e to the power x to the power root 2 plus ln x equals e to the power 1, which is e. And then we're going to separate these e to the power x to the power root 2 times e to the power ln x equals e. e to the power ln x, as before, is equal to x. Now we get x e to the power x to the power root 2 equals e. Uh-oh. We did not get x e to the x. We got something much more complicated. We got x to the power root. Can you imagine? This is kind of like a super exponential. But don't worry. We can take care of this. For example, if you had e to the power root 2x in the exponent, you would just multiply both sides by root 2. That would do the trick. In this case, we have to think in more complicated terms. We're just going to raise both sides to the power root 2 because that would give you x to the power root 2. But it would bring in some extra factors, but no, don't worry about it. We'll take care of them in a little bit. So this would give you x to the power root 2 times e to the power. Now, here's the nice part. When you raise a power to another power or to another exponent, you're supposed to multiply the exponents. So this becomes root 2 times x to the power root 2. Make sense? Awesome. We're super close because what we need is to get the same thing for x, right? This is our exponent. That's our thingy, or t. Now, all I have to do is, by the way, this is equal to e to the power root 2. Let's not forget that. Now, multiply both sides by root 2, and you're done. Isn't that awesome? Root 2 times root 2. And now we got our thingy. This is our thingy, or t. Or, of course, if you apply Lambert's W function on both sides, you're going to get from here, if you apply Lambert's W, this is going to give you root 2 x to the root 2. And the right hand side, notice that this is my t. And if you apply Lambert on it, it's going to give you root 2, which means x to the power root 2 equals 1, which means x equals 1. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up with that. All righty. So here's the graph of y equals x to the power root 2 and 1 minus ln x. As you can see, one of them is decreasing. The other one is increasing. They're only defined for positive x values and they intersect at 1 comma 1, which means, again, x equals 1 is the only real solution. Are there any complex solutions? I have no idea. You'll, you're going to let me know. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.